This is your call to worship. We thank you, Lord, for the epiphany of our Lord Jesus Christ, his baptism and all that. Thank you for coming and be with him all day. Amen. Thank you. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. There have been times of suffering in the past, and there is more trial to come. But God will never abandon his people. He will bring peace and redemption to them. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by your, my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 29. I will read to the asterisk and please respond with the remaining part. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of the fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe. And in the temple of the Lord, the Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord shall give strength to his people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now forever. Amen. The effects of discipleship are clearly seen. We must have teachers in the faith, not only to instruct, but to pray us with and for us as we seek to grow into the full statue of Christ. A reading from Acts to the Apostle. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For it had not yet fallen on any of them, 
but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Well, this is the first Sunday in Epiphany, um, the, the second season of the new church year. Um, it is about the revelation of God in Jesus Christ, a little child coming, God coming in the form of an infant, small and vulnerable, to reveal to us who God is, and God's love to the world. Well, as I began to put some words to 
the gospel this morning, as so often happens, um, things, what I find and what I reflect on takes me in directions that I hadn't necessarily planned to go. But so I offer this. Um, I found some words um, from Ken Kesselis, and he's been um, writing reflections on the gospel for a number of years, but I will share this with you today. So today we find John the Baptist at the Jordan River where he preached repentance and baptized Jesus and admitted how much greater Jesus was than he. So we know, of course, we heard John's story back in Advent not so long ago. John's story is of such great significance that we hear parts of it every year, twice and sometimes three times over the three-year cycle of readings. So John the Baptist, wild and woolly, wearing a camel's hair coat with a leather belt, eating grasshoppers and wild honey. He was certainly a rough and tumble preacher who issued a clear and strong message about repentance. He called some of his hearers a brood of vipers and talked about the retribution to come, screaming about those who fell short of the goal of God's kingdom as something to be thrown into a fire. And John admitted that his message was different from Jesus. John's preaching, strong as it was, in the long run produced only a watered down version of what Jesus sought for all God's people. John's message really was one of fear, um, a set of rules and regulations and constructs um, to follow. So even if people in hearing John's message followed his teaching, we might well ask, would it, would it last? Would it be lasting? John said he came to baptize with water while Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. John the Baptist's way is workable for the short run, possibly, but it is not the ultimate way God gives us. John and Jesus juxtaposed in the events that took place long ago at the River Jordan offers us, I think, a good comparison between the superficial kind of solution John offers and the more lasting solutions suggested by Jesus. John the Baptist's short run way is one of invoking fear, really, compared with Jesus' long run way of encouraging love, of reaching out to little children, eating with sinners, touching lepers, and always calling people, in a sense, into loving God and their neighbor. With Jesus' long-run command to love God with all our heart and soul and mind, with the long-run way of openness and unlimited hearts, inquiring and ever discerning, the peaceful and forgiving and inclusive long-run way, freeing people, really, to develop their potential. John calls us certainly to certain specific actions, but in the long run, God reveals a better, more challenging, oftentimes, way, the way of Jesus. Jesus frees us to be bold in our living. He releases us to move and act in life as if what we do really does matter. Jesus says that the kingdom of God belongs to these. So we know um, most of us here have had the experience of holy baptism or certainly been present at many baptisms in this congregation, I'm sure. But in the service of holy baptism, our church offers the commitments of the baptismal covenant that we say. And we say those at other times of the year too, possibly if we had baptisms this morning. Um, you know, if we did have baptisms, we would repeat these words and 
at Pentecost, and I believe um, there's a couple of other times also that we use those in place of the creeds oftentimes. So these commitments we, we have pledged to fulfill in word and carry out in action, these are the words we say with God's help to continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers, to persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord, to proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ, and to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. So in this season of Epiphany, more and more the light that came in Jesus as a little child is going to be revealed in signs and symbols. And a little child shall lead them. Amen. on high, we come before you with great joy. You, Lord, did not forget your church here. You guided us to Father Colby Roberts, and you guided us, him to us. We thank you, Lord, and we ask for your continual guidance as we begin our new life together. Lord, we thank you for your beloved people here who pray to you constantly listening for your voice and for Colby, who heard and heeded your calls. Lord, bless him and Kathy as we move here to be with us. We thank you, Lord, for the many people here who have done your whole
holy work, including every member of St. Timothy's who pray during the surge, those who served on the various search committees, those who kept St. Timothy's vital, serving behind the scenes in your name, those who lead our worship, Bishop Gretchen, Hannah Susan Cleveley, and the Reverend Andrea Farley, who guide, faithfully guided us every step of the way. Lord, again, we ask for your continual guidance. May we continue to glorify only you in all we think, do, or say. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And we thank you, Sandy Reed, for putting these beautiful thoughts into words. Thank you, Sandy. The Diocesan Prayer for Mission. Creator God, source of all love, you are the one who knits us together. Unite us in love that we may rejoice in one another's hope, persevere in suffering, and extend hospitality to strangers. Unravel our hearts, Holy Spirit, and thread new life through us. Craft us to be your hands and feet, Lord Christ a thousand strand rope, strengthened and known by genuine love. Connect us, woven as one, as you are, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people. The Lord shall give us the blessings of strength and peace. Beloved of God, let us pray. Walk with us through the waters, O oh God. Deliver your church, O God, from fear. Strengthen those who have been redeemed by your presence. Give us all the courage to keep our baptismal promises. Walk with us through the waters. O God, walk with us through the fire. O God, you have blessed us to be members of your household. Strengthen the unity of the church. We pray for Archbishop Justin, presiding Bishop Michael, Bishop Gretchen, and Reverend Joan, and those who are serving you east, west, north, and south. Walk with us through the waters. O oh God, walk with us through the fire. Your power, O oh God, is, the, is evident in the mysteries of our universe. By water and your Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people. We give you thanks and praise with the Daughters of the King, we pray for Carrie Marquez, James and Evelyn Mayer, Justin, Brenda, Anna, and Emma Maloney, and Elvie Melton. Walk with us through the waters. Oh God, walk with us through the water. Break down the walls of division in our city and our nation. We pray for Joe, our president, and Jay, our mayor excuse me, our governor. Bring us together as one human family formed and made by your great hands. Walk with us through the waters. Oh God, walk with us through the fire. Heal and comfort your beloved children, O oh God. Be with the needy in their trials. May they know that they are precious in your sight. We pray for Leo, Brandon, <clears throat> Emily, Heather, Annie, Joan, Bob, Nathan, Dwayne, Sonia, Anne, John, Carol, Lee, Anita, Joe, Jan, Derek, Terry, Geraldine, David and family, Tap, Brad, Jesse, Marty, Larry, Richard, Greg, Tui, Liana, Jenna, Shannon, Stanny, Stella, Jim and Diana, and Robin. Please pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus. <clears throat> Please add your own petitions at this time. 
Greg and Patty and Mark. Walk with us through the waters. Heavenly Parent, you have accepted us as your children. You have made us heirs with Christ in your great mercy. Receive us and all who have died into the glory everlasting. Walk with us through the waters. Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. special concern this morning, Michelle's brother. His name is Greg and okay. his wife, Patty. Mm -hmm. My brother, who's fought many things in the last several years, has contracted COVID and he's in the hospital. Oh. And uh, anyway, I would just ask your prayers for him. He's not doing that well. And for his wife, who's obviously Good and gracious God, we hold up to you, Greg and Patty. We ask you that they may know your love and care and presence in this time. Work in them your good and bring healing in your way. Comfort them and strengthen them. Surround them with the care of those caring for them. And may they know also the thoughts and prayers of their loved ones and of this congregation in this time. All this we ask in your name. Amen. 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 I have prayers for a special friend who will be traveling in dangerous travel. And family members will 
So we have a we have a prayer for a friend of Sandy's and family people that are accompanying um, this friend in travel um, that is possibly more than um, you know presents some challenges with all of it. So let us pray this prayer for travelers. Oh God, our heavenly Father. Whose glory fills the whole creation, and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Is there anybody here who does not know we have a new rector? Good. Um, so we know that. Uh, we are so thankful, all of us, for, for you who have prayed during this uh, seemingly forever process. Um, so, and as you know, the start date for uh, Colby will be February 1. Uh, and let's include in the travel prayer Colby, who um, is flying, his sister-in-law apparently is a pilot, and they'll be flying up today for him to look at houses, a place to live. So uh, that's all I know about that, but please remember him as he travels. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> um, you probably know more about it than I do then. Um, and uh, there's, uh, when the bishop sent out her announcement of the call, and that had to be done first before any announcement could be made um, at the congregational level. So, and her announcement has a lovely picture of Colby, it looks like it was taken at his ordination, he's standing on the steps of Grace Cathedral. Um, and if um, I'm learning, actually Friday, how to do our mass email, the uh, constant contact. Um, and if I can figure out how to include that picture, um, in an email to all of you. I'll do that, um, I hope, early this week. So, uh, let's see. I guess that's all. Sandy will have uh, sandwich making after the service. Uh, again, everyone will be masked. If anybody, I've got a, a couple uh, KN95 a masks, which are the recommended one. Once these days I have a couple extras and I'll be happy to um, give you one. Um, and distancing, uh, but as you know, no coffee hour uh, for the present. Anyway, that's it. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. <laughs>
at your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and happened. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord, God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only, and not for strength, for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Now as our 
our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.